Hello Automators, Paul here from DIY Automate. Last time we installed Raspbian Jesse Lite on a Raspberry Pi for use in our home automation infrastructure. Well, we want to connect eventually that infrastructure to the internet. So I think that we should secure the Raspberry Pi. So let's go do that. Okay, so last time we installed Raspbian on a Raspberry Pi 3 or 2 if that's what you had. And um, we did a couple of security things. We renamed the Pi account to something else so that we're not using the same account that everybody else in the world knows about to attack. We gave ourselves a new password, a new host name, made sure the root account was locked out. A lot of sort of security things, uh, basic security things. This time, we're going to go ahead and do a couple of more security things to get ready for starting to actually install home automation services. I am making an assumption here, one that is kind of important to note. So I'm assuming that your Raspberry Pi is going to be behind port forwarding of your home router. So there will be a firewall there. If you put your Raspberry Pi in a DMZ, and if you don't know what that means, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Excuse me, but if you do, and there are valid reasons to, uh, you need to do a couple of more security things beyond this video. And I will have a video of how to safely put your Raspberry Pi in a DMZ. And that's host intrusion protection, automatic lockout of too many logon attempts and things like that. But we're not gonna do that now we're going to make the assumption that you're inside. So we're going to do two things right now. One is we're going to set up SSH to use certificate based login. And this takes password login for SSH out of the picture. It means you need to have a public and private key pair. The public key goes on the Raspberry Pi, the private key stays with you. And when you want to log in, you use that private key. It's multi-factor authentication, something you know, which is the private key, and then the private key will have a password on it. So you need something you have, which is the private key, and then the password is something that you know. It sounds like we're swapping one password for another, but we're not, and I'm gonna show you why sort of at the end here. Uh, so stick with me and, and we'll get there. It's a fairly short video, um, maybe five to 10 minutes, just to set a couple things up, but then we're uh, good to go and we will start some fun stuff. All right, so first we are going to need to create the, that public and private key. So if you installed and we're following along with PuTTY earlier and you installed all the PuTTY tools, we're gonna to use a couple of them right now. We're gonna use um, key generation software and then pageant, which is an agent that'll do logon for. So go to your PuTTY folder that you made before, or I'm sorry, go to PuTTY folder that you installed into and for me, that is in my programs directory. If you just take the false, that's where it'll be. And go ahead and run putty gen. That's the key generator. And the way that this works is you hit generate, you move your mouse around, it takes the randomness of your mouse movements and creates the key based on that randomness. It's really hard to recreate this. You would have a really hard time to recreate randomness. Even if you want a straight line, there would be little variations, right? So. That's what we're doing here. So it created both our public and private keys. It's only showing us our public key here. And that's this thing right here. Um, and we need to save our private key before we move forward. And when we save our private key, we want to put a um, passphrase on it, right? So a password onto the key. So anybody who finds it or steals it from you, whatever, your friend screwing around, they would actually have to know the key phrase as well. So go ahead and put that on, treat it like a password even though it's called a key phrase. Um, it's called a key phrase, it's not sort of saved with pat, like a password, it's a little bit different, but go ahead and do that and then save your private key. You don't actually need to save your public key because your public key is embedded into the private key. So you don't actually need to save them both. I'm gonna call mine SSH underscore private underscore HA, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Now that's there. Um, I already had one in there from, from earlier, so I'm just going to overwrite it and that's fine. So if I wanted to now, I could go ahead and I could load it and it would load this information right back into the console for me. So that's it. So now we have our keys. And, and the other thing I'll just point out real quick is I'm using SSH-2 RSA with 2048 encryption. Um, SSH-2 is the one that hasn't been broken yet. 
So I would use it. Um, it's more secure than the rest. And then 2048 encryption, you can go to as much encryption as you want. Um, you're only encrypting the keys though, right? So the, the actual keys themselves have encryption to them and, and the amount of complexity that the keys innately have for your handshake to um, unlock your login. What this doesn't do is actually encrypt the communication between your Raspberry Pi and your SSH client. That's built in by default. That's what the S in SSH stands for, secure cell, shell. So we're not actually securing the communication, only the login here, okay? All right, good. So keep this open, sort of put it aside, open up your um, SSH client, PuTTY in this case, and um, go ahead and open up a connection to your Raspberry Pi. We've done this before. Type in your username, for me it's HA admin, and your password. Um, and once you're in, we're going to have to do a couple of things to get SSH set up for ourselves. Um, the first thing is SSH is sort of, encryption is done on a user basis, right? So we are going to need to create a directory to hold our public key. And to do that, it's mkdir.ssh. So now we have a directory. We're going to set a few permissions on that directory. Chmod uh, 700. I will do a video specifically on Chmod and some other things later. Um, for now, just know we're just setting some basic um, read-write security on that folder itself. Um, oh, I need to actually put the directory we want to do that too, .ssh. Chmod.ssh. Let me just retype that from the beginning. Chmod.ssh. So, oh, I'm doing it the wrong way. 700.ssh. Okay, so now that we have the security um, put onto the folder, we're going to go ahead and, and go into that directory. You can use path names if you want, but I just went in that directory to create a, a file. And what you need to do is um, go ahead and uh, nano and then a file name. And that file name is authorized underscore keys. It has to be called that. It has to be all lowercase. It has to be spelled right. Or this won't work. It has to be in that folder. So go ahead and sudo, or not sudo, just nano authorized keys. It's going to open up that file for you. Copy out your public key from the key generator and just paste it right into that file. We're going to save that file with that key. It's all on one line. That's the way we want it. So that it runs that long is fine. Don't worry about it. Hit control X and then yes, we want to save it and we're good. Now we need to add some security to that file. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to make the security, excuse me, to the point where groups can't use this file logger on only an individual user, only you can. Right? Otherwise, groups might have access to it. So what we want to do here is chmod 600 and then um, authorized underscore keys, and we're good. So now we have our public key on our server. We have the security for that set up, and we're, we're, we're good. And so the last thing we want to do is go ahead so that everything loads in, and we're going to restart the... Um, service. So you can do um, sudo, sudo service uh, ssh restart. And then ssh has been restarted. It should read that all in. It should have done it anyway, just sort of a safety thing. We don't want to have to reboot the server just to do it. But now if you create, go ahead back into your, your Raspberry Pi, it's going to ask you for a password, ha admin. Because that's fine. That's what we wanted. We didn't send it a key. The server itself still allows passwords, right? So it's saying, hey, there's no key. That's fine. We'll, we'll take a password. So we're going to change that as well. But before we do that, let's go and add our key to our, um, our Raspberry Pi session. So open up your PuTTY or whatever your program you're using is. Go to your um, session and load it because we're going to make a change to it. So now it's there. And go to SSH. Oops, my mouse is being a little squirrely. And auth, and then browse for your public key file or your private key file. So once that's in there, we're going to go back to session. Oops. 
and we're going to hit save so that that public key is our private key is in our session and now we can go ahead and open that and you'll see the difference here so ha admin now you see it's asking us for the password of our private key not or the passphrase for our private key not for the server itself right so you can go ahead and type in whatever you did to that private key and then it lets us in and i know that still it seems like we're just trading one password for another we have added another layer of security because now you have to have both the certificate and the key but you still have to type in a username and password we were going to change that in a second but the, the next thing we're going to do before we do that is change the system to not even allow us to log on without a key right so to say hey don't accept passwords at all we only want to log on with our key it's a fairly easy thing to do just go ahead and do uh, sudo nano and then etc ssh sshd underscore config and that's changing the ssh configuration for the ssh daemon which daemon's a service if you're not used to that used to the windows terms go ahead in there and we just need to add one line and we're going to add two lines here but um, one's just going to be a comment and the comment is change to no password log on and um, we're going to type in p-a-s-s-w-r-d so password authentication all one word camel case so capital p capital a and then everything else is lowercase no right so we're telling it no password authentication allowed easy enough okay so um, hit enter there and control x y enter so now we've shut off password authentication and we can verify that by simply trying to log on without a certificate right and we'll do that in a second um, we're going to go ahead and sudo service um, ssh restart just to have it load that in and we're good and now if you go back to putty and you try to log on to this don't don't use your session that we have the key in but if you just go to um, the ip address of your it should and then we just hit open there now we're not sending it a certificate right so as we log on as we're gonna say ha admin this is not supported there's no authentication methods allowed right so that's a good thing that's just saying hey you don't have a key um, you haven't passed me a file we're, we're good to go good all right so now we can go ahead and just close out of all these windows because we're going to prove that everything still works and if it doesn't we're going to be in trouble but we're good so go ahead into putty again and then load your session that has the key log on as um, ha admin and or whatever you're calling yours it's going to ask for the key again and now we know everything works so there's one last thing that we can do to make our life a little bit easier right and that is use pageant and that is the putty agent and what that does is it monitors putty for logon and when it asks for a key it automatically passes it your um your key phrase or your password it's a fairly easy thing to set up and what we're going to do is we're going to put in our startup directory so every time we start our direct our cert, every time we start our computer it asks us for that information and then as we log on to putty um, it just automatically does it for us. If you don't log on to Putty a lot, you can do this not in your start menu and then just double click it to run it later and you'll be fine. But I'm gonna put it in my startup menu. And the way to do this is you simply create a shortcut to pageant. And then we edit that shortcut, the properties of that shortcut and pass into the target our private key. So we're gonna go to our private key and I have mine under documents, SSH keys. So that's the path to my key. And I'm gonna just type in that whole name. And I'm just copying and pasting so that I don't make a mistake here. You can do it however you want. And then hit apply, and then it's there. And then we're just gonna go start it. So you notice the first thing, and this will happen every time you, you turn your computer, um, it or every time you log on it asks you for your key phrase for that key and, then, and that's it and then it just sits in the background you'll notice here no oh, my mouse is getting a little scrolly again I run out of resources but you'll notice pageant is running a little 
computer with a hat. That's the pageant um, icon. I don't know why. So go ahead and close that. You know that's working. We can close um, all of our windows. We can close the key generation window too. Um, and then go into PuTTY, hit your session that has your public uh, private key in it, and then go ahead and log on with your username. And you see it logged us right in. No usernames, no passwords, sorry. Um, the, the reason that's good is, well, it saves us, we, we typed in a password once and then we got in once, right? But if you're gonna do this over and over, you're gonna, you're gonna manage multiple systems. Say we are, you know, we're gonna install um, Home Assistant, we're gonna install MQTT, we're gonna install a bunch of other stuff. And we may be working on multiple systems and going in and out of them. And we won't have to type in anything when we do it. It's sort of effortless. You still do need your username and there's ways around that, but I think we're good for now. Um, so, so that's that. And then the last thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna shut off IPv6, right? So IPv6 or version six is the newest version of IP addressing. And it's great, we need it. It allows us to put a lot more things on the internet for our internal, um, for our internal purposes. We don't need IPv6, we're using IPv4. So disabling it is like uh, disabling a network interface or uninstalling a network interface. And go ahead and type if config, um, and it will give you your internet, your IP addresses for all of your cards. And you'll notice there is a um, IP internet version six address here, right? So you'll see that on all of the cards or all of your network interfaces. There'll be an IPv6 interface, um, which is fine, uh, but we're gonna turn that off and it's a fairly easy thing to do. So sudo nano and then etc and sysctl.conf and what that is system control um, configuration. So we're gonna go into system control configuration and we're gonna add one um, thing. We'll add it right after here. Um, and it can go anywhere in this file, it's fine. I just chose to put it here. I'm gonna put a comment in there, turn off IPv6 PJB. Um, and, um, and then we're gonna type in the following line. So net.ipv6, all lowercase, CONF, so IP, sorry, dot CONF. So, so the network IP, version six configuration uh, all, so for all network interfaces, disable underscore IPv6 equals one. Enter, control X, control Y. We save that out and then sudo SYSCTL dash P. And that's good, you can see it did it. Now, if you didn't do it, it would show you an error. So if you type something wrong, you type sudo sysctl dash p, it'll show you an error. Make sure you, you clean up that error before you go on. There are, you know, you're, you're, you're changing your network configuration. So if you did something really wrong, you could make it so you can never get back in your, your system again. So you wanna make sure that's clean, even if you have to delete the, your changes that you made and leave it as it was. Um, now, if we do an if config, you'll see there's no, IPv6 addresses running. So up here is the old if config, so inet6. Down here it's just inet, which is the IPv4. All right, so that is how we, we, we do that. So we have changed ourselves to um, certificate authentication and we've disabled IPv6. Um, again, you can go to diyautomate.me and that has a follow along document here. Um, if you're on um, the YouTubes right now, uh, subscribe, thumbs up, all of that stuff. Uh, there are many ways to do this. I am not opposed to go look on the internet for other ways if I'm not making some sense or I'm missing something, um, or you can just find a better way for you. Um, the point is to get you to a place where you're, where you're comfy. Next time is exciting because we're gonna install Home Assistant next time and actually make it do something. So it'll be our first actually true uh, automation video. So it's great. Um, so until then, uh, keep automating and I will see you soon.